Welcome, welcome. It is Thursday, September the 4th. This is Hurricane Hub Live. I'm Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandagis. Uh, tonight on HHL, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got our area of interest out in the eastern Atlantic that has now been tagged as an invest, invest 91L. And could there be a hurricane threat for Hawaii? Yeah, it's possible. It's not unheard of, but it's quite rare. And it may be happening within about five to six days from now. And 91L is set to become Gabrielle. Next name storm on our list, sixth name of the season. Um, likely to threaten land. Uh, not the U.S., too far out to say that, but the uh, Leeward Islands uh, could possibly be dealing with a high-end tropical storm or a hurricane in about seven days' time. So that could change. But that would be the area most likely to see any impacts from Gabrielle once it does form. All right, here we are on September the 4th, uh, just less than a week out from the peak of the hurricane season on the 10th. We normally see more activity this time of year. And honestly, it's not all that active in the Atlantic Basin. It's just this one area of interest. We're now Invest 91L. And a quick refresher on Invest, what this means, we can decode it. Invest is short just for investigative area. Uh, the number is just a record number. It rotates from 90 to 99 and then cycles back. So we've gone 90 to 99 already. So now we're back to 91. And the L is a basin indicator telling us it's in the Atlantic Basin. If there had to be an E at the end of it, it would be in the Eastern Pacific or a C. It would be in the Central Pacific. All right, so we are right here now in our tropical vocabulary pyramid. Possibly, if it was to become, just not have its act together completely, it would get a PTC designation, potential tropical cyclone. This is rather new. I mean, eight seasons in, it started in 2017. And then from there, tropical depression, and then it would get a name, tropical storm. Now, we could easily go from invest all the way up to tropical storm if it does organize itself quickly enough. Or if it doesn't, likely tropical depression. Since it's so far away from land, PTC probably unlikely uh, for 91L. All right, look at the Atlantic Basin. We've got a large, sprawling subtropical high here, evident by the lack of any clouds, really, any convection there with the sinking motion uh, across the majority of the subtropics. Down in the south, though, you've got the intertropical conversion zone, and you've got some areas of energy that uh, kind of pinched off or detached uh, from the ITCZ, and that's where we find Invest 91L. Odds have ticked up slightly for this to develop in the short term. Yesterday when we spoke, I believe it was at 40%. Now it's up to 60 in, four, in two days, in 48 hours. And then nearly certain over the next week, up to a 90% chance again of developing, organizing enough that it would become a tropical um, depression or a tropical storm, getting a name, uh, Gabrielle. Some of the stats on it, I mean, moving to the west at 10, rather slow movement. Also, very low latitude. We are at 12 degrees north. Very, very low. If you remember Aaron when it was developing, it was, you know, over here on the Cabo Verde Islands. I think it was at its lowest latitude. I think it was like 17 degrees north. So we are significantly farther south of that. That also brings to light that it's not going to be moving in the wake of Aaron. Even though Aaron was what, a week or a week and a half ago, it still did leave a sea surface scar that we've talked about in these videos. It did extract energy from the ocean and mix it up enough that it's cooled down the ocean surface in its path. This is tracking to the south of that. So it's an untapped sea surface temperatures, water uh, temperatures, heat, energy. And also we're starting to see uh, conditions, environmental conditions start to be a little more conducive as well. A look on the infrared imagery here, uh, a little close up on 91L. There's the Cabo Verde Islands, well to the uh, west of that now. And you're starting to see some weak spin, some weak uh, rotation there within the overall uh, cluster of thunderstorm activity. A lot of dry air, though, parked off to the north and west of its center. Very stable air out here as well. And as this is trying to get itself going, it's going to be susceptible to ingesting some of that drier air and then training it into its circulation. Now, once it does finally close off some circulation and start building in the west, models indicating this is going to be a very small storm. And typically, small storms, in particular, uh, small hurricanes are very susceptible to changes uh, with the dry air entrainment there. They can also have big jumps or big decreases in uh, intensity. But let's not put the car before the horse. This is still a it's an open wave right now that's been tagged as an investigative area. Let's see if this does pull up here. This is going to be satellite imagery uh, from today, visible satellite imagery. It looks like it's not going to work for us today, but it was starting to show a little bit more of a spin out there. Now, the big 
deal that is now tagged as an invest is we're starting to get model debt data on this. We'll get the uh, hurricane model plots as well as the GFS and global members starting to get some runs on this to see where it may go. So these are the first suite of models. Hurricane models we'll start with first. And there's a, uh, a lot of agreement early on. Good consensus. We've got convergence of all the hurricane models pretty much. There's some divergence here to get a couple of these out. But predominantly all showing a westerly track here. Again, very slow moving at 10 miles per hour. It's going to take a while to just cover this part of the Atlantic Basin here. And we took this out seven days. So a week from now, it may be threatening the Leeward Islands. A lot can change. There's not even anything written in stone that it's going to absolutely develop here. There is some inconsistencies with the global models. The GFS is a bona fide major hurricane. And the European strengthens it to maybe a high-end tropical storm or hurricane here up to the Leeward Islands and then hits the Caribbean and just falls apart, gets sheared apart, which is right. Too early to tell. GFS has been pretty consistent on a robust storm. European's been trying to hop on board here, but we don't really have consistency in the model run. So a lot of time to watch this here, but here's the first suite. Take this with this what you will. Um, this will change, certainly, but most likely it's taking a westerly track and could be a threat in a week to the northern Leeward Islands. Its intensity at that point still yet to be determined. Let's look at also the other computer models here. This is going to be the GFS Ensemble. In fact, all the ensemble members that are currently available with the Canadian GFS and European. Every line here, as you're going to see, is, is one different run of one of those models, an ensemble member. And you can see when we throw that on, we've got a lot more spread. Okay, some of these, which are just unrealistic, diving off to the south and west here, headed towards the equator. Don't think that's going to happen. The majority, though, are clustered along what we saw with the hurricane models, just off to the west. A few outliers here indicating a stronger storm lifting earlier to the north. Because once again, like we saw with Aaron, there is the forecasted potential here of the subtropical high breaking down, a trough developing, and that would provide a weakness for the storm if it's stronger to sense that weakness and lift north. So we have a couple ensemble members that are indicating that. But again, the vast majority here do hone in on the Leeward Islands being a potential target for what will become Gabrielle. Now let's look again at the um, uh, global models, the GFS and the European here. You're going to see the American pop up here in yellow. Uh, European, you'll notice, doesn't really show much. We've got to jump out several days from now to show really any development. I'm stopping here next Tuesday, the 9th, so we're five days out. Look at how low latitude these are, both in line. G European, barely a, a system at this point. GFS getting its act together here. Here's the uh, 10 degrees north, and we're like at 12. So we don't really gain any latitude in the next five days. It pretty much heads on a due west trajectory. GFS stronger. European very, very weak. Be probably may not even be a depression at this point in time. Let's jump out a little farther. European drops off. Again, hits the Caribbean. Whatever's there is weak and gets sheared apart. GFS says, hold on a second. Stronger storm at this point, hones in on the central leeward and northern Linwood Islands, Windward Islands, as a hurricane. Will this exactly happen? No, it's going to change. It will alternate or shift uh, by the model run, but certainly uh, needs to be watched. We go out from there, heads over potentially Puerto Rico. Again, GFS, one model run. This is going to change. It's not set in stone, and this is uh, nine days out. A lot can change and will change. And then the GFS, notice it's alone on this. No model agreement here between the GFS and the uh, European. GFS, bona fide major hurricane likely at this point, uh, just to the northeast of Trinidad and Tobago. Or excuse me, Turks and Caicos. Uh, and just north of Dominican Republic here. And this goes out to 10 days. So that's where we'll stop it. And that's really where the models end, actually. Um, where it goes from there. Way, 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 way too early to tell. Even 10 days out is too early to tell. Now let's look at both models independently. Uh, the European model here on relative vorticity, this is seeking out in the model's uh, spin, cyclonic spin uh, in the atmosphere here. So you'll see what I mean here when we start to see these storms kind of pinch on off. Uh, it lags a little bit here, but it'll pop up. And this is the European model showing uh, a storm system here uh, just due east of, uh, looks to be, uh, you know, you're right near Barbados, actually. By the time we get to six days out from now, middle of next week, uh, and then from there, 
it falls apart. You can see it getting completely sheared and almost completely disappearing. As we jump out to uh, 10 days from now, European just has dispersed its energy, its vorticity across the entire Caribbean and Southwest Atlantic. GFS, on the other hand, a little bit different here. You can see it kind of getting its act together, and it's a, a pretty bona fide storm by the time it approaches uh, the Leeward Islands here by six days out from now, middle of next week. We've got a storm system there, and again, tracks similarly to what we just saw on uh, the comparison models there. Uh, takes it into the north, uh, west, northeastern portions of the Caribbean and then tracks off to the north and west from there and emerges just to the east of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos as a higher-end uh, hurricane most likely at that point. Similar area to where Aaron was just about 10 days ago. Now, I want to stress with everything we've talked about and all the different model renditions at this point in time are most certainly going to change. And there's just a lot of time for that to happen because it's just so far away from it being potentially a threat to the United States. We're talking 11 days out, maybe 12 with it moving so slowly. It's only moving at 10 miles per hour. So it's got to cover a lot of areas and a lot can change and vary over that amount of time. Will the subtropical high break down sooner, later? Maybe not at all. If it doesn't break down at all, it's on a westward track, could go right into the Caribbean. Or if it breaks down sooner, it may not even make it to the Leeward Islands if, in fact, it does develop at all. All right, let's jump basins now over to the eastern Pacific. Still got two named storms out there. Lorena, which is weakened down from a hurricane to a tropical storm. And Kiko. This is going to be the one that may threaten Hawaii still cap four at this hour. We'll start with the one closer uh, to land. This one is a Lorena tropical storm down from a cap one hurricane just a little while ago, and it is on a period of rapid weakening. 25 mile per hour winds by Saturday. Right now it's sitting at 50 down to 35 mile per hour winds by tomorrow afternoon. Originally it was forecast to make landfall in the Baja California. That has now changed. We still, however, can have a big moisture envelope here. So lots of tropical downpours and rainfall still with this. So the threat is not completely gone. But the wind threat, the wind factor and the intensity of the storm has diminished. Good news. Let's get over to Kiko now. 130 mile per hour, low end, cap four. But it is expected to become 145 mile per hour category four. So strengthening is still expected. And then the five day cone does stretch out far enough to encompass the big island of Hawaii. And at this point, it is weakening. Tropical storm at this point, 60 mile per hour winds. And this is Tuesday next week. So five days out. Could be a threat here with some gusty winds. Of course, big surf and the heavy rainfall. Now, it's not unheard of to have tropical threats out in the Hawaiian Islands, but it doesn't happen all the time. And we're going to show you some of the most recent ones that have passed within the Big Island within 50 miles. Computer models here pretty much on board, all within that cone for the most part. Some do dive a little farther to the south and miss Hawaii to the south, and even a few off to the north. So as with Bermuda in the Atlantic, it's very hard to get a landfall of a hurricane. All right, It's like threading a needle. Uh, most likely won't be a, a landfall, but hey certainly could happen. I mean, it's going to be heading in that general direction. All right, Hawaiian hurricanes. Let's look at the past here. Within 50 miles of Hilo, I put it on here. We've got five storms within 50 miles. Most recently in 2016, we had Darby. And there have been landfalls on Hawaii. I just don't have that map for you today. All right, the Eastern Pacific names. We're up to Lorena now, so they've had a very, very active season. I think we were up to uh, Lorena was the seventh hurricane uh, so far this season compared to in the Atlantic. We just had one albeit it was a cap five, but just one. Uh, up next, the uh, Eastern Pacific will be Mario and Narda. So, all right, folks, coming up after a quick break, uh, we're going to have hurricane trivia for you. We'll see you in just a few minutes.
Welcome back to Hurricane Hub Live. Yesterday's trivia question, what U.S. county holds the record for the most hurricane landfalls? Is it Galveston, Texas, Monroe County, Florida, home of Key West, Broward County, Florida, or Plaquemines Parish in Louisiana? B, Monroe County, Florida, number one spot. Let's go through the top five, though, if you're wondering. we got to head up to North Carolina. They hold the five spots. Is that Carteret County? 23 hurricane landfalls there. Dare County, not too far behind with 24 hurricane landfalls. We head all the way to South Florida now. Miami-Dade County, number three, 25 hurricane landfalls. Next up, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, 26 landfalls. And finishing up with Monroe County, home of Key West, sticking out there in the Gulf. 33 hurricane landfalls, and this is only up through 2021, so some of these numbers may be just a little bit higher than that. All right, today's trivia question. What was the first name, what was the name, I should say, of the first storm that had been labeled a PTC, potential tropical cyclone? Remember, they initiated that in 2017. So what was the first time that was ever used? What storm came out of that? Was it Andrea, Brett, Candace, or Dorian? Well, have the answer for you, tomorrow night on Hurricane Hub Live. And remember, we are here every night, seven days a week at 8 p.m. for the latest on the tropics. We'll see you back here for your Friday.